Okay, so today we're going to be making a version of baked macaroni and cheese. This is the recipe that was passed down to me from my grandmother. It's what I grew up enjoying and loving for many years, and now I make it for myself and my husband. It's quite a frugal recipe. The only thing that costs a little bit more is the cheese. So, first we're going to be starting off with four tablespoons or half a stick of melted butter in the bottom of the pan. And you're going to want to make sure that the entire bottom of the pan is evenly and thoroughly coated. Is that a lot of butter? Yes it is. But it's part of what makes this macaroni and cheese so good. Next, we're going to be grabbing some elbow noodles. I always buy in the big boxes because it's cheaper. You're going to want two cups evenly coated across the bottom of the pan. And as you'll see in a minute here, you always, always make a mess when you're cooking, if you are a true cook. And so you're not going to want to waste any of those noodles you've spilled. As long as your surface is clean, just stick them right back in there. Okay, next we're going to want two cans of evaporated milk. Now this is very very important because you need enough liquid in this macaroni and cheese that it's going to cook the noodles well and thoroughly. There are many things that we can, can be changed or substituted about this recipe but you always want to make sure that the amount of liquid is at least two times proportionate to the amount of noodles that you use. That way it will cook properly. Next we're going to add one small onion, minced. Mine's in a little container because it was frozen and sometimes it takes a little work to get it out of the container, but it's worth it. It's nice to have on hand. Next, the magic spice. Garlic salt. It goes so wonderfully on so many things. So you're going to want a good coating of that on top. Next, we're going to be adding three eggs. These are pre-scrambled because, again, they were frozen. We don't use a lot of eggs, so we don't usually have them on hand fresh. So I freeze a few for recipes like this. Next, you're going to want to pepper to taste. And we like a lot of pepper, especially in this particular version because we're using Fiesta Blend cheese instead of sharp cheddar because I ran out of sharp cheddar. And then we want to add our cream of chicken. This really adds some good flavor in there. There are some small chunks of chicken in it, but not so large that you'd notice. And you're going to want to mix that thoroughly. We don't want any chunks in this macaroni and cheese. We want a nice, thorough blend until it's one consistent color. Then we're going to want to add the cheese. Now, the recipe calls for three cups of cheese here. I figure about three handfuls is equal to about three cups. Depends on the size of your hands, I guess, but this has always worked well for me. Again, I feel like many 
true cooks don't measure things. And of course, stir that thoroughly. And add aluminum foil on top. Okay, so now let's talk about the baking process. You're going to want to make sure, obviously, it's covered in the aluminum foil, as previously stated. And then you're going to want to put it into a preheated oven at 350 degrees. You're going to want to put it in there for 20 minutes, then pull it out. Take the aluminum foil off, stir it up good, um, make sure that none of the noodles are stuck to the bottom. That's something that, you know, it'll settle later. But for now, make sure there's nothing stuck down there. Don't want any burnt noodles. That's a bad thing. Once you've stirred everything up, put the aluminum foil back on, put it back in the oven, and wait another 20 minutes. At that point, you can pull the aluminum foil off, add another handful slash cup of cheese, sprinkle it all over the top, make sure there's a nice good coating. Sometimes I'll even do more than a cup. It just depends on how much I need to cover the surface. Um, after that, you're gonna let it bake for about five more minutes, depending on your oven. In order to get that nice brown top, you may have to set it on broil for 30 to 45 seconds, but that's dependent on your oven. Some ovens I've used, it comes out that way without broiling, and some I have to broil in order to get that nice brown on top. And you'll see what I mean when you see the finished product here. And voila, baked macaroni and cheese. Ooh la la, so good. Slice after letting it cool. And serve with whatever vegetables or meat you see fit. Look at that steam. Looking all professional. Not really. Pushing potatoes back on the plate here. And oh, look at that beautiful plate. Roasted potatoes, corn, and mac and cheese. All right, if you're watching this far into the video, I'm guessing you liked what you saw. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up so more people will be able to see it. And give me a subscribe so that you can know when I put out new videos. I would love to hear from you in the comments. I'll see you next time.